are you a DM who struggles to challenge your party? Perhaps you're a player who just doesn't want to die. Or maybe you're a vengeful son of a bitch DM who just wants to kill their players. Don't do that! Hello everyone and welcome to TPK Wednesday. My name is Lee, general overall nerdy guy and the DM for the new D&D podcast show Behold Us Crit and here I am today to teach you how to challenge your players. Before we get into it, I just want to clarify that you should never intentionally try to cause a TPK. I find the trope of a DM versus the players trying to kill him at every turn kind of funny, which is kind of where I came up with the title TPK Wednesday. If you want to have fun, do not plan a TPK. Anyways, TPK Wednesday is a new series that's all about creating fun and unique encounters to challenge your party with. And while these encounters can include combat, skill challenges, timed events, and more, since today is the first episode, I want to keep it simple. So we're going to be going over one of my absolutely favorite monsters to run and throw at my parties. If you have watched literally any video on YouTube about favorite enemies or classic bad guys, you've no doubt heard about the Mind Flayer, Beholders, Liches, or maybe even the Gelatinous Cube. Each of these are unique and awesome monsters that are really fun to run, however, I want to be different because I have a need to feel special because my mom told me I was, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. So the monster we're going to be talking about today is the Banshee. With that being said, let's plan a TPK. Starting off, the Banshee is a challenge rating 4 monster. For all those out there who don't understand what a challenge rating is, it is essentially a system that's meant to gauge how difficult a monster is going to be for a party of 4 players. Once you understand that, it's kinda easy. So a challenge rating 1 monster means that it's an acceptable challenge for 4 level 1 monsters, whereas a challenge rating 4 monster means it's an acceptable challenge for 4 level 4 players. However, I can guarantee that if you follow this system, you will either unintentionally TPK your party, or your monsters will get bopped in the first two rounds of combat because the system doesn't really take into account the action economy of combat. But anyways, that's a topic for another video. Let's kill some players. So following the AC system, a Banshee should be an acceptable challenge for 4 level 4 players. But with an AC of 12 and an average HP of 58, it's pretty underwhelming compared to other monsters of the same CR, much like an Orc Warchief with an AC of 16 and an HP of 93. However, the Banshee has a much more sinister secret which makes it much deadlier than a simple bruiser of the same CR. And that would be its Whale ability. Now let's just read this quickly. The Banshee releases a mournful whale, provided that she isn't in sunlight. This whale has no effect on constructs or undead. All creatures within 20 feet of her that hear her must make a DC 13 constitution saving throw. On a failure, a creature drops to zero hit points. And on a success, a creature takes 3d6 psychic damage. Holy cow, while the DC isn't that bad and it is once per day ability, it is theoretically possible when fighting a single Banshee for your entire party to immediately be brought to zero hit points resulting in an instant TPK. If that's the case, then boom, we're already successful, TPK Wednesday done. But even if the players succeed their saving throws, having a single party member go down and then dealing an average of nine damage to all party members at realistically the start of combat is a damn rough start for a party. To put even more perspective on this, the Barbarian at level 4 has around 30 to 40-ish hit points ballpark, meaning that a whale will do roughly 25% of the Barbarian's health. And that is the Barbarian, the poster child of health. <laughs> the practically only time you use a d12 Barbarian. Can you imagine a wizard? And if that wasn't enough, it also has a fear that forces all enemies in a 60 foot radius to succeed on a DC 13 wisdom save or become frightened. Anyone who becomes frightened now has disadvantage on all ability checks and attack rolls. Oh yeah, and they can't willingly move closer to the Banshee. This absolutely obliterates martial classes, especially those with low wisdom. Now you might be thinking, What's the big deal? 60 hit points? That's nothing. We can kill that in a round before it gets to do any of these cool abilities. To which I say, wrong you are, little Jimmy. It is nigh impossible to sneak up on a Banshee. If you play the Banshee right, they will always be prepared for your party and never be caught off guard because of a little passive ability they have called Detect Life. This gives the Banshee a passive trait that allows her to sense all creatures in a five mile radius that are not undead or constructs. And while she doesn't know their exact location, she knows their general direction, meaning that if the DM plays the Banshee right, they will almost always be prepared for the party. 
Not only will the Banshee practically always get a surprise round of combat, but it also has five miles of travel time to prepare their lair, set traps, get minions, and more. Now, if the players somehow find a way to actually get into combat with the Banshee, it still has a couple of aces up their incorporeal sleeve, such as a fly speed of 40 feet and the ability to move through creatures and walls. So realistically, your Banshee should almost never get caught in a melee, but even if, even if she somehow manages to get into melee with a Barbarian, the Banshee still has one more saving grace in the form of condition and damage resistances and immunities. She is resistant to acid, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical attacks, straight up immune to cold, necrotic, and poison damage, and immune to being charmed, feared, exhausted, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, restrained, anything. All of these resistances and immunities make the Banshee a fair bit tankier and allow her a lot more wiggle room to escape if things get a little bit sticky. Now that is a whole lot of cool things that a Banshee can do, but if you have a DM or if you're a DM like me, we like to customize nearly every enemy to keep our players guessing so we can make them even more deadly. The one thing that I find falls short with the default Banshee is that her technical only damaging ability is a melee spell attack, meaning that if anyone in the party succeeded their saving throw from falling to zero hit points, then she has to get up close and personal, putting her in arm's way to finish off the party. In my opinion, this is completely at odds with what the Banshee is good at and wants to do. But with just one to two tiny little tweaks, we can take the Banshee from a cool enemy to a crazy interesting enemy. The first thing I like to do is as simple as giving it a ranged attack. They actually did this in the module Icewind Dale, where their only change was to swap her melee attack for a ranged attack. This alone makes for a much more difficult encounter. Being able to dip out of the player's range, fly up in the air, all while frightening and popping spectral bolts at enemies to whittle down their health, that small change makes the combat much more interesting where the players will be hard pressed on how to get close enough to dispatch her before she TPKs or even escapes. And if you want to be extra mean and scare your players like I like to do, give them the ability to cast spells. Even allowing them to cast cantrips or first level spells elevates her from just a normal encounter to a real struggle for survival. Imagine the Banshee knocks down the ranger in the first round of combat with her whale, then fears the fighter, flies up 40 feet in the air, and starts raining down Eldritch Blasts upon the party. Or for more style points and create ambiance, you could give the Banshee Toll the Dead, where it creates a horrific echoing cacophony of moans and wails to shake the party to their core and deal 2d12 necrotic damage. And if for some reason you are still worried that this won't all challenge the party and believe that they still have good tools to deal with something like it, then you can throw a few undead minions there to spice it up a bit. I'm partial to the shadow myself, but really any low CR undead minions will work. Or if you're absolutely maniacal, give the Banshee layer actions. But honestly, the Banshee as written is already incredibly powerful for its CR and it makes for a really tense battle. I do suggest giving her at least some form of range damaging ability, but regardless of what you do, remember however unlikely it is technically possible to outright kill your party in one ability. Having your entire party die after eight rounds of hard fought combat is a little bit more epic. And if you don't want this to happen, then first of all, TPK Wednesday, hello. Uh, but anyways, you should always prepare for the worst case scenario to ensure you don't end your campaign right then and there. And if the party does get TPK'd and you weren't necessarily prepared for it, first of all, you should have been, I warned you. But anyways, don't panic yet because you can always fix it by saying, you know what, maybe the Banshee needed them alive uh, for some sort of ritual or possession that they all had to be alive for. But who knows, that's really for you to decide. And that's how you TPK your party with a Banshee. Hopefully I gave you all some food for thought so you can use this in your sessions and make some really interesting combat. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe so you can follow all of our future content. We create DM tips, weekly discussions, and more posted here every week. And you can check us out live for our D&D podcast show Behold the Script every Friday at 7pm over at twitch.tv slash 4 Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you on Friday.